Good morning. Welcome to my thought for the day. <clears throat> I'm going back today to what I was talking about the day before yesterday. Yesterday was an interruption because of it being Palm Sunday. <clears throat> but we're going back to the uh, story in Luke 7, 18, following um, about John the Baptist, who was in prison and how he had reached a point where he wasn't even sure that Jesus was the Messiah. He wasn't sure that Jesus was the one he had been sent to prepare the way for. And of course, he knew, he knew that his role in the work of uh, the Messiah was defined in Isaiah 40, verses 3 to 5, which are quoted in chapter 3 of Luke, um, that he was sent to make straight the paths to prepare the way for the coming of the Lord. Um, he knew that. But here he was in prison. This was something he had not expected. There's nothing in the prophecies about the coming of the forerunner to say what would happen to him. And uh, I think poor John the Baptist was at sea in his, in his understanding of what was going on. And if he had found himself in prison, surely the one he was serving and preparing the way for would come and see him, would come and minister to him, would send messages to him, would encourage him, perhaps, would get him out. Miraculously, perhaps, I don't know. I don't know what he expected. But he didn't expect the silence that he had from Jesus. He was in prison. And Jesus knew he was in prison. And the question was, are you he who is to come, or shall we look for another? Now, it's interesting, in Luke's account of this, verse 21 says, In that hour, Jesus cured many diseases and plagues and evil spirits, and on many that were blind, he bestowed sight. So for about an hour, well, for, for a period of time, Jesus did not answer these two disciples of John. He let them watch what he was doing. He let them watch the miracles being performed. And then he said, in verse 22, he answered them, Go and tell John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed and the deaf hear. The dead are raised up and the poor have good news preached to them. And blessed is he who takes no offence at me. Jesus doesn't answer directly. He doesn't say, yes, I am the Messiah. He says, tell him, tell John what you've seen me doing. All these miracles are happening. And blessed is he who does not take offence in me. And when we think about Isaiah, which was the great prophecy, which foretold, as we've, as we've thought, John's the ministry is foretold in Isaiah 40. And in Isaiah the foretelling is there of what the Messiah would do. If you want to look it up, it's in Isaiah 29, 18 and 19, Isaiah 35, 5 and 6, and Isaiah 61, verses 1 to 3 or 4. And these were prophecies that said, when the Messiah comes, the deaf will hear, the blind will see, the lame will walk, the poor will have the good news preached to them. So what he was saying was, go, tell him what you've seen me doing. And as you tell him, he will remember the words of the book that foretell that this is what the Messiah would do. And he will know that I am he. But what's interesting, very interesting, is that he does not say um, anything directly to John. He doesn't say to John, you were right. You had a great ministry. I, I'm so proud of what you did. You're amazing. Keep up the faith. Be of good courage. Be, be strengthened <clears throat> while you're in prison. I, I'm with you. I'm supporting you all the way. He didn't say any of those things. He referred John to the scriptures. 
and we'll see a bit later what he says about John, but he refers John to the scriptures. And he says, you know what the scriptures say I would do. And tell him what I've done. And he will know that I fulfill the scriptures foretelling my coming. He valued the scriptures and he valued John's, uh, John's um, understanding of the scripture and John's attitude to the scripture more than he valued the emotional well-being of John. And that's a very interesting thing, that actually the most important thing is to know the truth. And if you know the truth, the truth will set you free. I, it, it doesn't tell us what John's reaction was to this. We don't know. All we know is that John, in the end, was beheaded by Herod. That's all we know. But I believe that when they went back and they told him, and he rejoiced that these words of Isaiah were fulfilled, and that he had been right, that it, well, this was the right person, his, his human frailty and doubt was assuaged and he was reassured that he hadn't made a mistake that he was right that this this that that and as he pondered it he must have he must have been comforted by the message sent back by Jesus to him John the Baptist a very great man we will look at what Jesus says about him um, he doesn't say it about him in the presence of those two disciples he doesn't say it so that it gets back to John immediately, what he says about him. All he does to John, he, he, he respects John enough. He respects his faith and his understanding and knowledge of the Old Testament scriptures enough that all he has to do is refer him to the scriptures for him to be comforted. That just shows the value Jesus put on the, the, the Old Testament scriptures on the scriptures that foretold his ministry. It's a very interesting exchange to ponder, to ponder, to put yourself in the place of John the Baptist and see how would you have felt. Think about your life. Think about what you'd done and how successful you'd been and how suddenly you were in prison and how the one you had promised would come didn't even seem to notice that you were in prison didn't send mess didn't didn't just didn't care it seemed think about john the baptist great man john the baptist anyway those if you get a chance to read those passages in isaiah they're well worth a read and see how fully jesus fulfilled the prophecies of what his ministry would be about god bless you have a great day i look forward to seeing you tomorrow bye bye